so we have a tumbling asteroid hazard, and we can destroy it with our laser bolts. But the entire process seems a bit dull, so let's add some explosions to brighten things up. Let's open our Destroy by Contact script. The first thing we need to do is add a reference to our explosion visual effect. So let's write public game object explosion. Then, after our boundary detection code, write instantiate. We know instantiate, we've used it in our player controller script. Let's open our player controller script and copy the instantiate line. Paste it into our destroy by contact script. What do we want to instantiate? Our explosion. Where do we want to instantiate it? At our transform position with our transform rotation applied. This will instantiate the explosion at the exact same position as our asteroid. Save this script and return to Unity. In the prefabs folder is VFX Explosions. Drag the explosion asteroid onto the explosion slot to create a reference to it on our destroy by contact script. Save the scene and enter play mode. Now when we destroy the asteroid, we get a very pretty explosion. Let's see that again. Nice. On the other hand, if we ram the asteroid with our ship, we only get that same explosion. Now that's a little sad. Let's improve this script to accommodate the player as a special case and include a player explosion as well as the asteroid explosion. Return to our Destroy by Contact script. Let's add a public game object reference to our player explosion. Then let's duplicate our instantiate code. And again, what do we want to instantiate? Our player explosion. And where do we want to instantiate it? Where our player, as the other collider, is in our scene, or the other transform position and the other transform rotation. Leaving the code like this would simply instantiate two explosions with every on trigger enter event. Let's test the other collider again. Indent the new instantiate code and write if the other collider's tag is the same as player and add an open bracket. And after the instantiate line, we will need to complete this with a close bracket. We will now always instantiate our explosions, but if we collide with an object tagged player, we will also instantiate the player explosion as well. Save this script and return to Unity. Our player now needs a tag. Using the tag drop down menu, select the pre made tag player. There is no need to create a custom tag in this case. Select the asteroid game object and drag the explosion player onto the player explosion slot on the destroy by contact component. Save the scene and play. Wow, that's great. The last improvement we need to make on the asteroid is to get it moving towards the player. With the asteroid selected, open the scripts folder and drag the mover script onto the asteroid game object in the inspector. The mover script is the movement code we created when we were moving the bolt game object in an earlier assignment. Then, Set the speed value to negative 5. This negative speed will bring the asteroid down the screen towards our player. Save the scene, enter play mode, and test. And the asteroid tumbles towards our player. Conveniently, the boundary also takes care of the asteroid when it leaves the boundaries box by destroying it. Exit play mode. The asteroid hazard is done. We need to save this as a prefab, so drag the asteroid game object from the hierarchy onto the prefabs folder in Assets. This creates a new prefab of our asteroid game object. Lastly, delete the instance of the asteroid from our scene. Our asteroid hazard is set up and ready to go. In the next assignment, we will create our game controller.